Good afternoon. We're back at the organ and today we're going to learn a piece of music together. So before we get stuck into our piece of music, I once again want to say thank you. And this time I'm saying thank you for last week's crowdfunding project. Success. Um, yeah, we started a crowdfunding project last week or it went online. Uh, getting a sort of financing together to fund my new recording that I'm going to make. It's a new organ recording featuring improvisations, compositions, and jazzy arrangements, that kind of thing. And yeah, in one week, the first financial target has already been reached. Unbelievable. Who'd have thought? Now, there are two available targets for me, basically, which will help produce certain numbers of CDs and extras and cover all the costs, that sort of thing. But the whole point is that you, as a sort of thank you, you get hold of your own copy of the CD before they go public. Yeah. Now, there's certain prices in there, 15 euros, 25 euros, 50, 125, for different sort of sets of things. So the CD or a signed CD, personalized, of course, um, or CD together with some music for the pieces involved there or with all the music and, and so on and so on. Um, um, so that's all in there. And you, if you buy one of those packages or whatever, you get your copy before everybody else does. And they will be sent out all over the world at no extra charge. So you're getting them at a vastly reduced price as well. So we've got until October the 6th to sell as many as possible in advance. Yeah. And like I say, as soon as they're finished, they will be sent off to you around the world. So get in quick before they're all gone. So what exactly are we going to do today? Well, we are going to learn a piece of music together. Well, I'm going to learn a piece of music and you're going to watch and hopefully learn along. Um, in the past few weeks, we've been doing sort of improvisation videos and people have commented or sent emails to say, well, that's all very nice, but I can't really play the organ all that well. So how about showing us how to learn an easy piece of music? So I thought, okay, today we will learn an easy piece of music and it's going to be an easy piece of music by Johann Sebastian Bach. Did I really just say an easy piece by Bach? Technically, there's no such thing as an easy piece of organ music by Bach. So here I have my book number six, volume number six of my Bach complete organ works. And I'm using that to shield a, a certain other piece of music. Obviously, we're not going to learn one of the difficult ones together. I've only got that there because I'm learning something else at the moment. So. Um, when I started playing the organ, God, a very long time ago, at the age of 11 or 12, one of the first things my organ teacher taught me was the eight short preludes and fugues by Bach. And he said, we have to learn these, we must learn these, which of course is uh, nowadays not a very good way of learning things. You must do it this way. But we did, and it worked, and it was very nice. And um, what I've done here, I found the music for the... Is this, what is this, the fourth one, I think. Um, Prelude in F major, BWV556, from his short Preludes and Fugues, and we are going to learn this piece of music together today. So once you've got the music ready and you've laid it out in front of you on your organ desk, I've printed it out on three pages so that it fits exactly there for me. Obviously, you've got it in a book, so you can... Uh, turn pages and things like that. But I've got it laid out like this. First thing you need to do is, of course, decide how we're going to go about learning this piece of music. Now, one of the first things I always suggest to pupils is, regardless of the music itself, what key is it in? And then start practicing that scale until your fingers are in that mode. So this is an F major. practice your F major scale a couple of times, both hands, of course, and so on and so on, okay? Why should you do that? Well, first of all, it's to get your fingers into that feeling, F major feeling, yeah? Your fingers sort of know what they're doing and fit the keys exactly. Remember a couple of months ago, I'm not actually sure how old that video is, but I posted a video about learning the organs and learning scales and sort of fingering, set fingerings for scales. We split the octave up into two, a one, two, three part for these fingers, one, two, three, and a one, two, three, four part for those fingers. So F major starts with the fours, and then you have the three, and then the four again. Yeah, so sort of you learn that, and your fingers are ready to fit that scale at any time. Okay. We can take that a st stage further, of course. We look at the piece of music again, if you would like to join me over here again. This 
these bars here, we have some thirds. Now, you can play those as thirds. You don't have to, but you can. And we're going to have a look at that today. So we've got this. And there are various ways of playing thirds. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I had a, an improvisation video where I was playing thirds in the melody in the right hand. Yeah, And um, when I was young, I practiced all that kind of technical stuff so much that it's just second nature now. That's the whole point of practicing scales. It's so that your fingers do it automatically. And I think it was in E flat. And I was playing thirds in E flat. Yeah, and that's actually rather easy if you know what the fingering is. Yeah, so I can highly recommend you do that on a regular basis. Yeah, practice your scales, practice scales in thirds, practice scales in sixths, all sorts of bizarre things and get your fingers learning these things by themselves so that you don't have to think about it. Your fingers will do it automatically. Okay, right. Let's get into the music. Once you've practiced your scales, the second thing you're going to need is one of these, a pencil or a pen or a quill or something with which you can write some fingering and make some notes as you're going along. Yeah. So let's throw that in there. So how do we start? Here's the page, here's page one. How do we start learning this? Piano players are going to say, I will start by learning the hands. Organists will say, well, I could start with the feet, then I could have the left hand and the feet together, then the left hand and the, oh, sorry, then the right hand and the feet together, and then sort of put it all together like a jigsaw puzzle. And that's, of course, a good way of doing things, and that's probably how we're going to do it. So I'm going to start by looking at the pedals. So let's have a look at our pedal line. F, B flat, G, C, blah, 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 and so on and so on. There's a little break here in every bar, there's a little rest in every bar. So are we going to play this just with one foot or are we going to use both feet? Well, it's obviously better to use both for a simple reason that there's a pattern going on here. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left. So we're marching along here. And if you look carefully, let's look at every second bar. We have an F there, a G, an A, and a B flat. So the left foot is just going palm, 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 just wandering up. And the right foot does the same thing, B flat, C, D. Now the last three bars here, there's something different going on. So we'll look at that in a minute. So let's look first of all at these first few bars, how easy that is. Well, I'm, I'm not playing this in rhythm. I'm just playing the notes at the moment. So swing down to the pedal, please. I've got my left foot on F, my right foot on B flat, my left foot on G, right foot on C, left foot on A, right foot on D, and finally my left foot on B flat. Do you like my blue shoes and red socks, by the way? I'm making a real fashion statement today. Let's do that again. So, left foot on F, right on B flat, left on G, right on C, left on A, right on D, and left on B flat. And the, show, uh, the, uh, the good part about this is I'm just moving my foot up all the way, as it were. So here's So I'm just moving in parallel, as it were. There's nothing much going on there. That's the easy way to do it. So. What about the last three bars? Something different going on here. I've got the notes B flat, A, B flat, C, and F. So there are various different ways of doing this. It depends how technically or historically correct I want to be. If we're doing it legato, which means all the notes are joined together, then I have to use my heels and toes so I can, where was I? I was here, the last note, yeah, F, G, A, B flat. So I was using my left toe, as it were, on the B flat. I can do that. I can use my left heel on the A. Left toe again there. Right foot on C. And there I am, down at the F. I can, of course, swap. Where was I? Yeah, there's a rest. And now I can get my right foot in there. My left foot on the A my right foot there again, but now I'm sort of stuck. I can use my right heel on the C 
and my left toe on the F, but that's sort of slightly less comfortable in this low position with the right foot. So I think I'm going to stick with my left foot doing that, and then right, left, finish it off. Okay? Now, those were just the notes of the pedals on the first page, okay? We haven't done anything with the rhythm yet. I'm going to do the rhythm when I add it to a hand. Let's now start looking at one of the hands. Can I ask you a personal question? Are you left-handed or right-handed? Simple as that. If you're an organist, I suggest you start with the left hand. Most piano people will always start with the right hand because that's probably where the melody is. I always suggest starting with the left hand because you're going to then start adding left hand and pedals together, which is the most difficult thing to coordinate at the beginning. And then when you add the right hand, it's easier. So let's get into the left hand here. Now, I've already put in some fingering for the German version that we just recorded. Um, so try to ignore that. If we look at these first three bars, we have an F major scale basically going up. There's the F, G, A, B flat, C, and then it sort of hangs around and then disappears back down again. Slight problem is we have a turnaround here and a turnaround here, so a sort of extended scale. Let's look at this one first. So in my F major scale in the left hand, I play 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's fine, that's where the music stops, but the music has this turnaround, so why don't I just go and then all these fingers are ready for the downward scale at the end, okay? But what about at the beginning? Well, I've got this funny turnaround here. And if I pretend I just played an F major scale from the bottom, this is where I would end. So if I play this F, E, F like that, and then continue the scale with finger four, remember we're in the four group here, so. And then I play a few C's, and then at the top, turn around. There we have it. Now, having learnt that, I'm immediately now going to go and write in my fingering. This is very important. So I said one, two, or one, and then finger four. Now, I don't need the others because I know what that's happening. But here, we had finger one, two, one. So now I've got... First three bars sorted. What about the next few bars? Now, if we have a look here, it's sort of all the same, really. It's just sort of eight notes not doing very much by themselves. But as we're about to find out, there's a pattern going on here. So if I start off and play the first three, and then the next three, I have a pattern there. And just like in the feet, this sort of raises as the bars go along. So five, three, five, two, one, two. Now the same thing a bit higher. Five, three, five, two, one, two. Same thing even higher. And then we have these last few bars, which we're going to look at separately in a minute. So let me write that fingering in. Five, three, five, two, one, two. And then that goes on the same. I'll write it in here again. Here's the end, two, one, two. And then I have the same feature, but not really, my, not really my pattern anymore because it doesn't continue. So if I have this two, one, two, I can play the last three notes with four, two, four. And I don't have to move my hand position at all. Okay? Four, two, four. So basically, I've got a hand position here. Five, three, five, two, one, two. New hand position, five, three, five, two, one, two. New hand position, five, three, five, two, one, two, four, two, four. And then we have the last couple of bars. The last couple of bars we will look at together with the right hand because there's a way of, is it cheating? No, it's not cheating, but there's a way of sort of splitting that up to make it easier. Now, we have our left hand ready. We have our feet ready. Let's put them together. Uh-oh. So, get into position. The right, left hand starts here. My left foot starts here. My right foot starts here. I am ready to go. Here we go. Keep it real slow.
So I'm going to stop there and analyze what I just did. I think the notes were all right, but were the note lengths all right? Let's do it again. In fact, let's have a look at the music first. When I play a pedal note, well, it makes it easy here because it's the same starting note, an F with the F, a B flat with the B flat, so on and so on. That makes it easier, but look, a pedal note lasts a quarter note, so two eighth notes, and then I have a rest. So I need to make sure that that rest can be heard. Does that make sense? Can you hear the rest? Let me just play that bit. I'm leaving out the rhythm. I'm just making sure that my feet are out of the way for that last note. was much better. Now I'm going to try all of that again and concentrate on those rests. I'm happy with that. By the way, I mentioned this in the German version, I haven't mentioned it here. I've changed the registration a bit so that I can hear what's going on. When you're learning a piece of music, a lot of organ teachers say, oh, just stick with an eight foot flute. That's all you need. Well, you wanna hear what's going on, especially if you've got hands doing separate things and then pedals doing separate things. You want to be able to hear each individual voice. So play around with the registration on your organ until you find something where you can really hear what's going on. So I've got the pedals coupled to both manuals. So I have eight and four foot flutes on the swell. Eight and two on the grate. And I've coupled both of those down to a 16 foot in the pedal. So that I can really hear what's going on. Okay, don't forget that. And now the right hand. So. I've cheated a little and I've already started. We have a turnaround feature again. So here's my one, two, one. Okay, so now I have all these thirds that I have to play, oh boy. And here, on this note here, I've got to have some extra fingers. If I just play five, three here. The next notes are these two. So I've got lots of different notes, uh, not different notes, but I've got lots of chances here to change. So if I need five, three here on these highest notes, why don't I change earlier? And if I change all the way here, it gives me time to prepare for my thirds. So five, three, change. Yeah. Now, We've got to work out how to get from that high note down to this one here. So I'm gonna get from here. Uh oh, I have two more notes. So I'm just gonna tell you what to do, okay? Once you've reached three, one, the next notes just play five and three, but really fast like that. Get your hand to move as fast as possible. So you have to practice that. Let me write that in. Five, three, four, two, three, one, five, three, and then four, two again, okay? So if you practice all of that, notice how I'm really hitting the keys there. Yeah, we need a lot of power to play third, so if you do that. You're gonna have no problems. Now, moving on, 
it's really rather easy. Just like in the pedals and in the left hand, we have a sort of pattern going on here, yeah? So it's the triads, and then another triad, and then the same thing a bit higher. So why don't I work out a fingering that makes that work? So if I have one, two, four, then I can keep my finger one there, and I have three, five here. So I have a pattern, one, two, four, one, three, five. Move up. And now at the end, why don't I just go one, two, five here to give myself something new to do. So. That works. It's quite easy, isn't it? So now we've got that. We have to work out what to do with our last three bars. Bars. And the problem with these last three bars is we have three lines of music, as it were. And I'm not talking about that, th those three lines. I'm talking about just here. There are three lines of music. We have a melody at the top. And we have this line in the middle. And then we have this left-hand line here. So how are we going to do that? Do I play both of these with my right hand? Hmm. Or why don't I play them with the left hand together because it's pretty much the same rhythm. So my right hand is free for the melody. TR, by the way, means trill, and that just means you sort of tickle the note. So it's a G that's written with a trill, so you trill the G and the note above. And theoretically, you start with a note above, so I have an F, a B flat, a trill on a G, that's, that means I start with an A, and end on the G, obviously, and then my two Fs at the end. Okay, we'll talk about trill some other time, but that's a basic overview of what we have to do here. So my left hand then takes over, i get my hand in the right position, all of these notes. So I have the G at the top, a C and a B flat, an F at the top with a C and an A, F at the top again with a D and a B flat. And now I have a problem because this C comes before that E. So I hold the F, play the C, hold the C, play the E, and now I have this together. Does that make sense? I'll do it again. Together, 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 on its own, on its own, and then those three. Okay? So here I've got to sort of hold notes while I change other notes. Let me play this in rhythm, all just with the left hand. This line in the middle, by the way, I'm just using my thumb. Maybe you can look down at my hands for this now. So, here we go. So there's a bit of jumping going on as well. That's it. So that's quite easy, theoretically. If I put them together, If I now play hands together for this, we're getting somewhere. Darn it! I played a mistake at the end. Did you notice it? this complicated bit here, yeah? So, what happened there? I started playing, I thought I could do it, I was going too fast, I hadn't practiced enough, yeah? So, you practice those bits until you can really play them almost by memory, 
then you start putting things together. I did it again. My left thumb wasn't in the right place, okay? So maybe I need to practice the change from that bar to this bar. Let's do that. So obviously you do that 110 times until it's perfect. And then we have it together. I think we've just spent the best part of half an hour looking at one page of one of Bach's easy, short prelude. Imagine how long it's going to take when we look at a really complicated piece together. So now we've got the hands together, we've got the feet and the left hand together. What's next? Feet and right hand together? Okay, you do that, because you know how it works. And now it's time to put it all together. We've practiced a lot, we've practiced enough, we've ironed out the little problems we have in this bar here, and I can't get my thumb in the right place there. You've done all that, now it's time to put it all together. Concentration, let's go. sounded fine, but was it exactly right? I noticed my left hand did some funny fingering in the second bar. I also noticed that my feet weren't holding the notes for the full length there. Let's do it again. better, I think. So I'm going to do that again four or five times until I'm happy that I can do it. mistakes. If you did find them, let me know. It just goes to show you have to keep practicing. You really have to keep practicing until you've got everything absolutely perfect. Keep going. Yeah? It takes time and you need to, you need to take that time. Don't rush through things. Yeah? Um, when you're playing a piece of music like that and you make sort of one little mistake, keep going. Okay? Imagine you have to play it in a concert. You can't stop and then correct your mistake and then carry on. So keep going. Learn to keep going. But once you've finished, go back to that place where you made that mistake. Practice that. Practice the bits around it. Make sure it's right. Make sure your fingers know what they're doing. And then you should be good to go. Yeah? So it takes time. And uh, like I say, please take that time. Right. That's it for today. I hope you learned something. I hope it wasn't too boring because we only covered like the first page there. Um, what happens then after that? Well, there's a repeat at the end, as you may have noticed. Um, the bit in the middle is there's nothing really new in the middle. Yeah? It's all hands only sort of stuff. So um, it's quite easy to work your way through like we did the first page. Uh, 
I'd uh, be quite interested to see and hear what you can make of it. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to like. And uh, yeah, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.